Oops, hey, hey, hey. Sharon Hornell from here with day 13, the 13th step in our get anything you want or create whatever you want in your life in 14 days or less or in less than two weeks. And this is one of my favorite topics and my favorite steps in the process. And it's all about our sixth sense. Now, we all know that, you know, taste, sight, sound, hearing, and touch are our five senses, right? And we're all very familiar with our five senses. We've been working with them our entire lives. But a lot of people go through their entire life without really recognizing or understanding that we also have a sixth sense. And this sixth sense is the one that communicates with infinite intelligence. It's the one that we receive hunches through. It's the one that we receive our intuition or our messages through. It's the one you experience when you have like a near miss at work or a near miss in a car accident. Um, our sixth sense is tapped into universal intelligence or infinite intelligence or universal wisdom and it protects us from accidents and things. I mean, we actually avoid a lot more accidents than we ever experience. I mean, sometimes we experience accidents or we have illnesses or we have things happen to us, but the truth is we, we have a lot more near misses because of our sixth sense and our intuition. We make different choices. We, we take a different route home. We don't get in a car accident. We, um, we make a different decision or a different choice so that we don't experience some negativity that we otherwise would have had we made a different choice. <coughs> Excuse me, a bit of a cold. So this is actually one of the most incredible and most powerful chapters in the or steps in the entire process. And that's because I'm going to teach you a technique that Napoleon Hill taught me and has taught millions of other people that is so powerful it is almost mind-boggling. And you don't realize how powerful it is until you actually try it for yourself, try it in your own life. But let's talk a little bit about um, the sixth sense from Napoleon Hill's standpoint. He calls it the door to the temple of wisdom. And it's the 13th step toward riches in, of course, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill from 1937. I would like to share some of the call outs and the highlights in this chapter, as well as some of the sayings that this particular, these authors of, they're not really authors, they're the re, re sharers and commenters of the original Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And this one is by, with, jo, with not by, with, Joel Fatinos and August Gold. And they did some cool things in this version. They added some, some call outs. You don't have to go through and highlight your whole book if you don't want to. And then they also shared some um, quotes by other famous people. They added a few sections to the book. They added a reference section and success notes and continued reading. So they did some cool things in this version of the book. They actually added a 90 day success classics reading list and a 90 day plan um, with checklists and homework for you to go through this, this particular version of Think and Grow Rich and apply it in your life. Now we're doing it in 14 days, so we're like really compressing that timeline and doing it with something small so that you can prove to yourself that the process works. And once you prove to yourself that the process works, you will naturally try it on bigger and bigger and more important things in your life and, and more important aspects of your life. But anyway, I'm getting off the topic of the sixth sense. I'm going to use my magnifying glass because we're still having, or I'm still having some eye issues. The 13th principle is known as the sixth sense through which infinite intelligence may and will communicate voluntarily without any effort from or demands by the individual. So our sixth sense is already operating. It's always operating. Just because we're not paying attention to it doesn't mean it's not always working. Our sixth sense, and, and nobody really understands how the sixth sense sense work. It's, it doesn't, there's no organ that receives it in our bodies. I kind of believe that it's in every one of our cells and it's just inherent in our being, but I don't know if that's true or not. That's just what I believe. Um, I'm sure scientists are working on it and trying to understand it and figure it out more, just like, you know, they're, they're working on, on other functions of the brain and the mind that we don't understand. Um, <clears throat> but the sixth sense is operating all the time, no matter what. It's like the laws of nature. They're always working, whether you believe them or not. 
They just are. It doesn't matter whether you believe them. You're still bound by those laws because that's how our universe works. Average people accept the good that others tell them is good. The infinite did not create you to be an average person. I love this. This is by Raymond Charles Barker. And um, one of my biggest fears, okay, I'm going to admit something here, has always been being average or normal. I've always been scared to death that I would just be average or normal. Now, I think my family would say there is nothing normal about me, but that's a good thing. The sixth sense is that portion of the subconscious mind which has been referred to as the creative imagination. It has also been referred to as the receiving set through which ideas, plans, and thoughts flash into our mind. The flashes are sometimes called hunches or inspirations. I call it intuition or gut feeling or instinct. Um, we all know that animals have instinct and that's how they, they operate and make choices and do things. Um, that's how they decide when to, to mate. Animals all have, most all have a mating season and how do they know that? They know that because of instinct. I don't think they have a sixth sense, but instinct is also, I think, the animal's version of a sixth sense. There's nothing noble in being superior to some other men. The true nobility is in being superior to your previous self. This is a Hindu proverb. I love this one too. I mean, I don't know about you, but one of my pet peeves is people that think that they're superior to other people. This would be one of the reasons I have personal difficulty with people that are in a, a, a say a position or a political office that think that they should garner special treatment or respect because they're in this position. Well, everybody deserves respect. Everyone on the planet, every human being deserves respect. It doesn't have anything to do with what position you hold, how much money you have, where you were born, any of it, nothing, nothing. We all as human beings deserve dignity and respect. And no human being is more valuable than any other human being. Now, can I already hear the hate speech coming in and, and all the arguing coming in saying, oh yeah, some human beings are more valuable than others, and I would say bullshit. I mean, who would you say is more valuable than, than anyone else? Is it the president? Is he more valuable than, than any other person, any other human being? Is it a movie star or some famous person? Is it a political personality or ruler? How, how do you say who is more valuable as a human being than anyone else? And who are you to judge? Who am I to judge? I know I am no one to judge. That's why I believe that we are all created equal as human beings and souls and spirits. And we all have opportunities that we can take advantage of. And some, some of us have more opportunity than others. And, and that, that does make a difference. But that doesn't mean that you're better than anyone else. Okay, enough rant over. Um, the way to build character, and this is all about you becoming a better version of you, is through auto-suggestion. Again, I am statements, affirmations, um, visualizing and, and seeing what you want to be and how you want to be with respect to any character or, you know, I want to be healthier. Healthier is a, a character trait. If I want to be healthier, then I have to decide that I want to be healthier and then I have to build my character to create habits that make me healthier. Maybe not a great example. If I want to be wiser I, or have more knowledge, I have to decide that that's important to me and seek out ways to become more knowledgeable and wiser and smarter and, and better at thinking. The same is true for any character area you want to believe. If you want to be um, richer, more financially secure, if you want, I don't know, but yeah, that's probably a character. Um, if you want to be a better partner or be have your relationships be richer and fuller and more fulfilling, if you want to have more peace of mind, any, any character trait that you want to have and, and embody in yourself, you need to use auto-suggestion or affirmations and you need, you need to work at deciding and building that using these steps to create that in your life. Understanding the sixth sense comes only by meditation through mind development from within. Again, no one can develop character for you. You've got to do it yourself. It all comes from within you. 
Uh, much may be depending on your doing some simple act. It may be the very thing which is to open the door of opportunity to very great possibility. Wallace D. Waddles. That's again another author that you should or could, if you're interested in this topic, um, seek out and find. Um, the Science of Getting Rich, quick read, excellent book, excellent. Um, through the aid of the sixth sense, you will be warned of impending dangers in time to avoid them and notified of opportunities in time to embrace them. Developing success from failures, discouragement and failures are two of the surest stepping stones to success, Dale Carnegie. Now, Dale Carnegie told us all, and I think many of us have learned from personal experience, we learn so much more from our failures than we ever do from our successes. Um, I know, and it's hard at the time to admit, but I know that the opportunities that I've missed, that I would consider a failure, the jobs that I didn't get that I considered a failure at the time but then went on to get a much better job instead, the business opportunities I passed on but led me to something bigger and better, the, the businesses that failed that I they stopped doing or didn't participate in anymore. People, other people would consider those failures. I consider them stepping stones and learning opportunities to what I really need to be doing and should be doing. I should be the grandma in pajamas, right? Talking about steps to success. Um, the author, Napoleon Hill, says, the author is not a believer in nor an advocate of miracles for the reason that he has enough knowledge of nature to understand that nature never deviates from her established laws. Some of her laws are so incomprehensible that they produce what appears to be miracles. So basically, Napoleon Hill is saying, hey, I don't believe in miracles. I believe that it's all a part of the natural order and the natural laws of the universe. Defeat never comes to any man until he admits it by Josephus Daniels. Josephus. Josephus Daniels. Interesting name. My experience has taught me that the next best thing to being truly great is to emulate the great by feeling and actions as nearly as possible. So back as early as Napoleon Hill, he talked about modeling, the concept of modeling. Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson, several other teachers have made the concept of modeling really, really popular. And all modeling is is paying attention to what somebody who's done what you've already want to do it's doing and then don't copy exactly, but model and emulate what they're doing. What are their thoughts? What are their feelings? What steps did they take? What worked for them? What didn't work for them? Do what worked. Use that model as a springboard to create whatever it is that you want to have created. There is very little in this universe nowadays, although we continue to evolve and change and grow really, really rapidly, that someone hasn't done something similar to whatever it is that you want to do or someone else might be doing what it is that you want to do and that's you know even better because you're going to model what they're doing springboard off of that add your unique personality and twist to it and make it yours the toughest thing about success is that you've got to keep on being a success talent is only a starting point in business you've got to keep working that talent Irving Berlin <clears throat> okay, now what I want to talk about and what Napoleon Hill spends the majority of this chapter talking about is something that he has called his invisible counsel. And I had totally forgotten about this, this strategy or this technique or whatever you want to call it. But I recently started, as part of this, I started doing it again. And it has been so powerful and amazing, the impact that it's made on my life and my thinking and the ideas that come to me that... I wouldn't, I wouldn't have access to otherwise. And I'm just going to summarize what, what, I, what I've done with it and how Napoleon Hill did it, and then I'll, I'll read some more of the comments. But basically, what you do is you set up your own mastermind, invisible council, or team of dream people that you want to have be like your advisors, your committee members. And <clears throat> you call upon this team, this dream team of your own, with whatever it is you need help with, whatever your next step is, whatever area of your being that you want to develop. Now, Napoleon Hill filled his 
Invisible Council and led that council. He was the chairman of the council, which I am of mine, and I would imagine you will be of yours. Um, <clears throat> and he had council meetings because he wanted to develop different character traits, the character traits of successful men at his time. He wanted to develop those character traits in himself. So he had people like Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Edison, Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford. And remember, these people were living at his time and during his time. The cool thing about these invisible councils is you can have anybody you want on it because you're just tapping into and calling upon their consciousness in your imagination. So you can have both people that have passed away already and people that are still living. And you can tap into their consciousness or their subconscious using this process. <clears throat> For example, I have my father on my invisible council and he passed away three years ago now. Um, <clears throat> I've got, I don't know if I want to share everybody on my council. I think who you put on your council is a really personal thing. Um, but I, I mean, I have famous people that are both living and famous people that have passed away on my council. My council is different than Napoleon Hill's council. What I want to create and develop in my life is very different than what he wanted to create and develop in his life. Now we both wanted to create success. So some of the people that he had on his council, I've invited to be on and have on mine, but they're not exactly the same. And I've set my council up so I can have people come and go based on what it is that I'm working on in my life. For example, if I'm working on my health and wellness, I invite different people to my council meetings than if I am working on um, financial health and wellness, financial riches, I guess is what I'm saying. And if I'm working on personal relationships, I would invite different people to that council. So you can do whatever you want with your council. It's your meeting. It's your, you're going to create this council and have these meetings in your imagination and in your mind. What I do is first thing in the morning when I wake up, before I get out of bed, I close my eyes and I tap into my council and I ask them, well, what is the most important thing that I need to accomplish today? And they know what my goals are and what my big, my big desire and my definite purpose is. And so they will suggest to me or the committee will discuss and suggest to me and I come up with and we come up with what my one main driving force or thing, one main action, one main thing I need to do today is. And then I do the same thing at night, right before I go to bed. I check in with my counsel and I listen and ask for any feedback or advice in terms of what I did during the day that worked or what didn't work, because let's be honest, not everything works that I try um, or that I do. And did I actually do and accomplish the action that I needed to accomplish for the day? Some days I don't get it done. Other days, I, most days I do because I only pick and focus on the one thing till it's done. But there's some days where things come up, you know, I gotta go visit my grandmother, she's 98 years old. When it comes to working on my businesses or working on me versus going to see my 98 year old grandma, guess what, grandma is always gonna win. Um, but that's how I use my invisible console. And then during the day sometimes, I might tap into them and ask them a question or ask a particular member in my council a question because I know that if I can think of the situation from a different perspective as in their much wiser, more experienced perspective, I will get a better answer than if I just try to come up with, with an answer myself. So what does Napoleon have to say about this process? The procedure was this, just before going to sleep at night, I would shut my eyes and see in my imagination this group of men seated with me around my council table. I actually dominated the group by serving as chairman. Um, <coughs> again, back in Napoleon Hill's time, he had all men on his council. My council is made up of men and women. I think there are a few more men on my council, but as I change my work with that and, and get better at working with it, I'm sure there'll be more and more women, depending on, again, what the topic is that I am working on with my counsel. I had a very definite purpose in indulging my imagination through these nightly meetings. My purpose was to rebuild my own character so it would represent a composite of the characters of my imaginary counsel. So that was the purpose of his counsel. Mine is more pragmatic. I want to achieve my definite purpose and my definite purpose has to do with what I want to create 
in this world during my lifetime. And so my definite purpose is, is different than um, Napoleon Hill's, where he wanted to figure out and embody the character of all of the people on his council. I definitely don't want the character of some of my people on my council. Um, during my meetings with the Invisible Council, he called his the Invisible Council. I'm not sure what I'm going to call mine yet. I've been, been knocking around some names, but I'll think of something. I find my mind most receptive to ideas, thoughts, and knowledge which reach me through the sixth sense. So this is how the sixth sense ties into all of this. The information that you receive from your invisible council comes through your imagination, comes through your sixth sense. I can truthfully say that I owe entirely to my invisible council full credit for such ideas, facts, or knowledge as I received through inspiration. So he is saying that all of his inspiration has come through his use of this practice, the invisible council. Um, John F. Kennedy said, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other represents opportunity. And isn't that the truth? So today, that's it. That's the sixth sense. Again, we don't really understand how it works, but we know that it's working for all of us. Again, with infinite intelligence. We don't really understand infinite intelligence or how it works or how we tap into other people's brains and minds and, and wisdom, but we all have the ability to do that. We just have to practice it and, and choose to do it. And using this invisible council, creating your own invisible council of individuals is the quickest, easiest way of doing that. Um, so who's going to be on your council? If you're going to have your own imaginary team to achieve a goal or objective or to achieve all of your goals and objectives, as in your definite purpose and desires to achieve in your life, who's going to be on that council? And and how are they going to show up for you? And what are they going to show you? And how are they going to teach you what you need to do to achieve the goal or objective or the success that you want? I have got to admit, I did not use the, invinci the Invisible Council very well on this particular 14-day challenge. Again, my seven pounds by in the 14 days, lose seven pounds in the 14 days. Um, I use my Invisible Council for much bigger things than that. I. I've got a lot of experience with losing and gaining and losing and gaining weight. So to me, I didn't need to call upon my invisible counsel to help me with that particular challenge. And so I didn't use them for this, but I might going forward because I think that it's a part of the process that makes it so much more successful that I don't want to skip it. So I encourage you not to. And think about this today. Think about whose brain, whose mind, whose wisdom do you want to tap into, both living and dead? I know Napoleon Hill had Napoleon on his. He had, again, I said Lincoln. Um, he might have had George Washington. No, I don't think he had George Washington. I can't remember. Anyway, he lists them in the book. But um, I have more contemporary people on mine, but I still have a couple people on mine that he had as well. I have Albert Einstein on mine. Who doesn't want to tap into Albert Einstein's way of thinking and wisdom um, maybe you don't. Maybe that's got nothing to do with what you want to accomplish in your life. But I have a scientific brain, so I find him fascinating. So he's definitely on my council. Like I said my dad, him. I have a couple of very famous people who's, who I'm not sharing because some people might judge based on their political beliefs or who they are, which has nothing to do with why they're on my particular council. Um, but that's it. That's it for today. So decide who you want to invite on your council. Start building your council. You don't have to have, you know, 10 people at a time. You just, you can add them one at a time. My first person was my dad. I, I was like, I know I want my dad on my council. And he sits right to my right and, and whispers in my ear and tells me questions to ask or things I need to hear or, or asks me questions about things that I, I might be overlooking or forgetting to consider because I have a, a pre, a prejudice or a pre, um, formed idea of what I should and should not ask. And so uh, I invite members to my council to help open my mind and broaden my horizons. Because I know that I'm naive and I only see, you know, this. I don't even see this much of the world. I'm, I'm a grandma in pajamas, so I don't see much of the world. Anyway, awesome, awesome lesson, awesome strategy. Try it. Try it for yourself and see how it works for you and what kind of insight and, and information you can allow your sixth sense to deliver to you because you're open to it. See you tomorrow for day 14, the 14th step of our get anything you want in two weeks or less. 
I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.